the United States Department of Education, Miguel Cardona. Good afternoon. <clears throat> I'm going to start off um, acknowledging some uh, news that I, I learned um, just a few minutes ago. There was a shooting at the University of Las Vegas, the University of Nevada, Las Vegas uh, school shooting. We don't have all the information. We know there are several victims. Uh, the Department of Education will be reaching out and will support the schools, uh, the school the best way we can. Uh, I want to extend the thoughts with that community and commit once again to doing everything we can to improve school safety, which is our number one priority. And I know you will join me in uh, saying a prayer tonight for the families in the community. I want to thank you uh, for being here today and, and thank you for the warm welcome. And while I know Secretary Holland could not be here in person, I know she's thrilled uh, to host us once again at the Department of Interior. Uh, Secretary Holland, I know um, you may be watching or you'll be watching later. Um, she is truly an inspiration to the cabinet. And every time I have an opportunity to sit next to her or listen to her speak, um, I know the president made the best choice in uh, Secretary for Interior, and she speaks with so much passion and respect for those uh, who um, are on our lands and uh, for our different tribes. Um, it's truly an honor to work alongside her, and uh, she's a special person. It's an honor to be here with so many tribal leaders, especially on the heels of Native American Heritage Month. I also want to recognize a dear colleague, Naomi Miguel, Proud res kid, where is she? Stand up, please, stand up. <laughs> Naomi Miguel. A proud res kid from Chui Chu Village and the Tohono O'odham Nation, who heads up our White House Initiative on Advancing Educational Equity, Excellence, and Economic Opportunity for Native Americans and Strengthening Tribal Colleges and University. That is her title. It's a long title. Let's give her another round of applause. It's a long name, but let's face it. Uh, when it comes to supporting tribal sovereignty, strengthening the nation-to-nation -nation relationship, revitalizing languages, and nurturing the full potential of Native American students, we have a long to-do list. We're fighting against the dark and ugly legacy of forced assimilation, discrimination, of trauma inflicted on indigenous peoples throughout our history. Not too long ago, those in power practiced appalling policies aimed at eradicating native languages and native cultures. Those policies were shameful, they were wrong. And we cannot deny that their impact persists to this day. There were once 245 indigenous languages spoken across our country, 245. 65% of those languages are now extinct, with dozens more at risk of disappearing forever. In my visits with tribal leaders and families, one thing that has been made clear, this is an existential threat, pure and simple. Your languages keep your cultural traditions and your identity alive. Because when a student becomes fluent in the language of their ancestors, they can breathe new life into, into traditions and support sovereignty of their tribe. At the Department of Education, we're working to raise the bar for multilingualism in this country, including preserving native languages. We're a key player in the 10-year whole of government strategy to revitalize Native American languages and the Native Language Mem Memorandum of Agreement. We've also launched the first ever National Native Language Resource Center. We're really proud of that, which includes three regional centers who will provide technical assistance for Native American languages in classrooms across the country. We must honor tribal consultation and educational sovereignty and fight for an education system where the ability to speak native language is considered an asset, not a deficit. So today I want to say it loud and clear to all those who speak tribal languages. Your native language is your superpower. Your native culture is your superpower. 
And to help more students realize their superpowers, we're also creating new pathways into the teaching profession for more racially, culturally, and linguistically diverse and well-prepared educators. We know how powerful it is for students to see their own identity reflected in their teachers. Do we have any leaders with tribal colleges and universities in their communities? Yes? Okay. Our TCUs drive the revitalization of native languages and culture. I visited several tribal colleges and I've seen it firsthand. In fact, about, it was about a year ago when I visited Salish Kootenai College in Montana and experienced firsthand the spirit and pride and self-affirmation alive on that campus. I met students rejoicing in the opportunity to meaningfully connect with their cultures, in some cases for the very first time. I saw how it gave them more pride in their history, more confidence in their future, a greater resolve to give back for their community. It really built up their self-identity. You know, it's, it's a powerful thing when students feel they can be themselves and be unapologetic about themselves and celebrate who they are and their identity. As a classroom teacher and, and school leader, when a student is confident in who they are, they do better. I'm proud this administration's, uh, in this administration's historic support for TCUs at nearly half a billion dollars, $474 million to be exact. That includes $190 million from the American Rescue Plan to help TCUs and their students recover from COVID-19, helping nearly 24,000 TCU students stay in school amid an unprecedented crisis. Can you imagine 24,000 TCU students having to leave school because of the pandemic? Well, thanks to the American Rescue Plan, that didn't happen. The Biden-Harris team will continue to push for even greater investments. A year ago, we secured $51.5 million for TCUs for 2023 an $8 million increase from 2022. And we're fighting for $53 million for fiscal year 2024. Before I conclude, I wanna highlight another member of our Department of Education family who's here. Her name is Dr. Amy Lloyd. Amy, can you stand please? You may know Amy, she's from the Zuni Pueblo tribe and she leads our work on career, technical, and adult education. Um, we have this opportunity in this country with the Invest in America dollars, whether it's the Chips and Science Act, the bipartisan infrastructure plan, or the climate provisions under the Inflation Reduction Act, we have an opportunity to fill millions of high-skill, high-paying careers. And we're changing how we're doing it. We're gonna connect our high schools, to our colleges, to our workforce partners. And Amy's leading that charge. Someone from the Zuni Pueblo tribe is leading that charge for the whole country. <laughs> Last year, Amy heard from the director of education for the Coeur d'Alene tribe that I think government officials need to remember. She said, it's important that education is not something that's being done to us. We've heard that before. Because that was a reality for far too long. And in the Biden-Harris administration, we're working really hard to change that. In fact, we're the first administration to hold tribal consultation on the entire Department of Education budget. And to me, tribal consultation is more than just keeping the lines of communication open. It's also about making sure the needs of Native students, the vast majority of whom you know attend public schools, inform our entire Raise the Bar agenda, from including Native languages in our multilingualism efforts to transforming school-based mental health, to creating more pathways to family-sustaining careers, and so on. Simply put, I'm committed to the entire Department of Education being in service to our Native students. Together, let's ensure that tribal sovereignty also means educational sovereignty. Let's continue celebrating Native American cultures and supporting the use of Native American language. And let's make sure that every Native American student, parent, family, and community has a voice 
in shaping education for Native American students. Thank you, and I look forward to the conversation later.